right, guys, so it's the win and end round. Round number four, we've got two players who are both on two wins. A win puts them into the top eight. A loss likely eliminates them. From contention on the left, we've got Troy King. We've seen him already tonight. He's playing red-green devotion. Basically a mono-red devotion deck splashing green for Planeswalkers. His opponent, Jonathan Wright, who is on Esper Control. So Troy... Winning the die roll, starting strong with a Frostburn Weird into a Hammer of Perforos. Hammer really good uh, in this matchup. Frostburn Weird actually pretty good too as it's uh, an inexpensive clock that uh, Troy can force Jonathan to deal with before he commits anything else to the board. So Detention Sphere takes out the Hammer of Perforos. Troy misses on his fourth land drop, but just uses his mana to sink into the Frostburn Weird. Jonathan tapped out. So no fear of getting blown out by a Doomblade or comparable type spell. Troy does find a fourth land off the top. It's another mountain. Serves in no pumps this time. Likely going to use that mana for something else. It's a Xenagos, but that's going to meet with a Dissolve. Jonathan leaves that card on top, so can't be real comfortable for Troy at this point. Jonathan adds a Munivolt to his board. And Troy serves to rebuild. No blocks from the Frostburn Weird. And no pumps. There's a Temple of Abandoned Troy. Debating whether or not to keep this card, he decides to shove it to the bottom. And there is a Xenagos the Reveler. Let's see if this sticks or not. Jonathan could both syncopate or dissolve it. But no, it does not. Jonathan using this opportunity to rev for two here. It's going to go back up to 15. More importantly, draw two cards. And Troy, I believe, <laughs> lamenting because he attacked before he... Cast his Inigo, so missed two points of damage there. But there's an argument for that sequence of plays to possibly bait Jonathan into an Azorius Charm or some removal spell that would tap him low and would keep counter magic uncastable. But a second D Sphere takes out the Xenagos. Troy with five mana now, two creatures on board, but slowly losing ground in this one. Looking in Jonathan's hand, I think I see an Elspeth in the back. He's just one mana short of casting, and I believe he has the six land in his hand. He also has a Doom Blade, so Troy can open himself to getting blown out here if he sinks a bunch of mana into his Frostburn Weird. We'll just have to see how he plays it. So there is an Ash Zealot. And just serve in with everybody. No blocks from Jonathan. Serve in with the Frostburn Weird. That's going to eat a Doom Blade, but uh, Jonathan is going to take four here. Now this is an Azorius Charm. Jonathan does go down to 11 here. But Troy is tapped out, so this is a prime spot to land a Verdict. Or six land and Elspeth is what, what I thought I saw in Jonathan's hand. We'll see if that is in fact what we've got. So he shocks himself, which is usually an indication. Now I stand corrected. He shocks himself, but then casts the verdict. So I guess there was an Elspeth in his hand, or rather Jonathan feels like this is a better line. Leaving that two mana open, I guess, for a syncopate for one? No, it's for the Doom Blade in his hand, which will answer the Frostburn weird, assuming Troy doesn't do anything else. So there is a Xenagod. Far from uh, turning on at this point, but still pretty brutal in terms of its uh, granting of haste and pumping. Interacts nicely with Frostburn weird, but. Uh, Jonathan's still representing that uh, removal spell. 
So Azoria's Charm, Replacement Jace, and a Temple of Deceit here. If I'm Troy, I split that Azoria's Charm. You've got to know that Jonathan has a removal spell the way he shocked himself in the previous turn to leave that two mana open. But, uh... It's Charm versus Jace, and I guess the question is, where do you put the land? Probably put the land with the other Jace, because taking the Jace is not necessarily... Yeah, I think this is how I would split it, too. Johnson is going to take the removal spell, so the correct split, at least in terms of quantity of cards from Choi. And Jonathan just passes back, so... Troy draws here. He can't effectively attack this turn with the Xenogod's ability to grant haste and pump a creature, but he knows whatever creature he attacks with is going to get stymied by at least that Azorius charm that he just put in Jonathan's hand. So there is the Frostburn Weird. Serving in. 4-2. Jonathan deciding if he wants to blow his, his charm now. And I guess there's a chance that I could have misread his hand and he does not have a Doom Blade. The charm is in fact what he goes for here, which leaves an opportunity to land this Domri. There's some uh, synergy there, getting some value, knowing that the Frostburn Weird is on top. So tick up Jace. There's an Elspeth. Make three tokens. We'll see how Troy gets out of this one. One, two, three, four. So we need three more devotion to red or green to turn on that Xenogod. Troy draws a stomping ground off the top. That's not going to help. But his hand has to be loaded with spells as he's missed his land drops the last couple turns. So we'll see exactly what he what he does here. Gonna need to find a way to get that Elspeth off the board. There is a Frostburn weird. Four mana four. Fanatic of Xenagos. One, two, three, four, five. Probably gonna redirect that to Elspeth. If Jonathan has a syncopate for one here, it's gonna be beautiful. He can also Doomblade the Frostburn Weird in response, which is what he's going to do here. So now that trigger is only going to be good for three. You still shove it over to the uh, Elspeth, I would think. No, he's going right. I, for, I forget. Failed to uh, recognize Jonathan's already down to six here. Now Troy deciding what does he want to do. He's got his Zinagos trigger on that Fanatic. He's got a Dom reactivation as well. So that's now an 8-6 Fanatic. It's just going to eat a Soldier token, I would think, here. Reveals a Thunder Maw off the top. So pretty good here. Jace ticks down, revealing <sighs> Elspeth Temple Thoughtseize. Should be Thoughtseize or no, because that Thoughtseize trades for the uh, Storm Breath. And again, Jonathan, or uh, Troy correctly splits it. Mortars versus Storm Breath. That Mortar's still going to be pretty good here, too, as it's going to clear out blockers. Jonathan's going to need a. Jonathan's going to need a counterspell here, or he dies. I think at this point, if he doesn't have a counterspell, he is obliged to minus four the... minus four the... or minus three the Elspeth to get rid of that Fanatic. If he has a counterspell... I mean, this line telegraphs a counter magic, because if Troy overloads that... If Troy overloads that Mizu Mortars... Jonathan's just dead here. We know the card, one of the cards in hand is a Jace, and one card looks like a Supreme Verdict, so am I missing something here, or is this going to be good enough? Overload Mortars, clear out all the blocks. Oh, we have a Mutavolt. This is what I'm missing here. 
Tick up the Domri. Revealing a card I could not see because of the glare. It was obviously a creature, or Troy just cheated. So Overloading Mortars will clear out everything, but and it will eventually kill uh, Force Jonathan to jump block with his Mutavault here. A Flyer is lethal. That we know about. Obviously Troy did not draw Storm Breath Dragon or he would have just slammed it here. Question in the chat, uh, the Xenagos ability does not give Trample. So there's six mana, overloading the mortars. Trigger on that with Xenagos. So forcing the Mutavolt chump and passing back. So Troy almost obliged to still do that just to keep... Uh, Just to have force Jonathan to uh, chump with this Mutavolt, effectively Stone Rain, because any other point it wouldn't be as lucrative. This gives him outs to draw. Wait, he just ticked up the Jace. He can't minus the Jace. He can do that, however. Cast another Jace. Minus. Revealing Syncopate. Planes from Ice Age. And Dissolve. Should be Land Dissolve. Land syncopate versus dissolve, I would think here. Jonathan's gonna to have to take the dissolve. I think this one's a pretty easy split. Jonathan obliged to take the hard counter. Plays a land from hand, ticks up Elspeth. What does Troy need to win here? Whatever spell he casts is going to get countered. I'm not sure if he can dig his way out of this, actually. We know the one card in his hand is a creature that he revealed to Domri last turn, but we don't know exactly what it is because of the glare. Looking at his hand, trying desperately to figure out what those cards are. So there is a Boros Reckoner. <sighs> Jonathan does have... Let's see, it's interesting here, because he does dissolve. Now he's dead to... Uh, dead to another Fanatic here. Tick up the Domri. Troy just plays the land from his hand. Servin with the trigger. Jonathan just chumps out and then passes back. So Jonathan in a pretty good spot here. He can verdict here, I believe, if he wants to. He can attack Domri for two, then verdict, then make three more soldiers seems fine. Forcing Jonathan, uh, forcing Troy to play off the top of his deck. I think he'd like to minus two Jace to do that as well, but don't think you cash in Jace at this point. So there's a plus on the trigger. We are attacking into Domri. There is a Banishing Light, so O-Ring on the Xenogod. Jonathan may have closed the door here. Fnatic still, uh, no, Fnatic is not lethal. Fnatic will put him at one. <laughs> Storm Breath Dragon not lethal here either. Take Domri up, revealing a Frostburn weird. the other card in... Is it another Domri? 
mean, I guess you're out here is to play... If it's another Dahmer, you could potentially tap three for a second Dahmer, plus it, draw Storm Breath, attack. That still is not good enough because of the, the delayed Jace trigger. It only puts Jonathan to one. I think you try and survive this turn and pray that you can find a... Pray that you can find a... Fanatic off the top. I don't even think that's going to be good enough because Jonathan likely going to kill the Domri this turn. Because he doesn't have exactly lethal here. He only has 15 power of attackers. So Jonathan probably just going to make three tokens on his turn and then try to win next turn with the emblem. This has been a tricky one. Been a good ga good game of magic here. Troy looking for an out. Jonathan, I guess, deciding if he wants to block. Jonathan goes to one here. Very dangerous, as that would have left him dead to a fanatic, but not afraid of that. So Jace goes down, revealing. Watery Grave, Last Breath, and a Mutavolt. I guess Mutavolt and the other two cards. Yep. So Troy and I are on the same wavelength here. Four separate J splits all, all matching up. Jonathan takes the two card pile this time. So valuing removal as opposed to the Mutavolt. He's going to scry off his temple now. As expected, ticks up the... Elspeth one more time, leaving Troy dead on board to an ultimate next turn. Likely just pass back with shields up here. Domri is down. Off the top, Troy finds. I think Fanatic is his I think Fanatic is his only out here. And I don't think he drew it. There is a Domri. Fighting does nothing here, so take it up, see what's in the top. Pray that Jonathan doesn't have a removal spell. Other than Last Breath. Find a dragon, find a fanatic, and steal this game. There's no other option, I think, that works here. I think Troy's trying to figure out a way if he can use Domri to fight, survive one more turn, because he could fight and attack in with both creatures. That forces Jonathan to block once, leaving him with five tokens that will still keep him alive next turn, but I don't think you win the game that way. Off the top, it's a burning tree emissary. Not the creature he wanted. He's going to be able to add that to his board here. I think the other card in his hand is a land. So serve in here. A little game of cat and mouse here with the last breath. Because if you're Jonathan, you just jump block each. And that's good enough. No uh, pumps from Troy. Just passes back. Why we didn't play the Burning Tree Emissaries? Somewhat baffling to me. So Jonathan looks like he's loading up an attack on the Domri. He knows Troy's deck doesn't have any instant speed removal in it, so he can get away with attacking with just the four soldiers. That's the reason why I think Troy probably should have played the Burning Tree last turn. 
So we tick up the Jace, then we play a new Jace, revealing Rev, Land, Land, Rev, Supreme Verdict. So we're obviously taking the Rev here. Jonathan's actually the creature deck at this point. Play a Watering Grave tap. We see an Elspeth get to 10 loyalty, which is not something you see every day. Three fresh tokens. Let's see what's on the top of Troy's deck. At this point, Fnatic. Rev for two, puts him at three. Fnatic is good, would be for four. Because Troy is going to be able to respond to the last breath with a pump. There's a Nykthos, so. That's likely his draw for this turn. So we're serving in here with two creatures. Jonathan can chump both, still survive with six soldiers, and that's exactly lethal for next turn. There are the chumps. Try going to play his burning tree this turn. And just passes back, so that appears to be the game. John's going to untap and draw ultimate Elspeth, attack for 18. Let's see what his deck serves up here as he tries to break even here. 20 minutes left in this round, so both players are going to be fighting against the clock to a certain extent. Uh, at this point, with the number of players that came tonight, we had... Uh, 22 players it looks like uh, 2 1 and 1 probably does make the top 8 but uh, Troy needs to get that one win before that's even relevant So game two underway here. Both players just leading off with Scrylands. Troy does not have a two drop here. And Jonathan plays a temple, so he can't counter a turn three Domri if it's inbound. Shocking, shocking ourselves here. Three mana, four. Hammer of Perforos. That was uh, Troy's turn three play last game as well, and it immediately ate a D Sphere. So we'll see how Jonathan responds in this game. He has the D-Sphere in hand, and <laughs> like clockwork, goes ahead and takes out the hammer, which provides the uh, Devotion deck a lot of reach. So Troy shocking himself again. Shields are down here from Jonathan, so he can resolve whatever he wants to. There is a Chandra Pyromaster. Pretty good. I'm going to tick that up. Get some long-term card advantage out of that. See if Jonathan has another Oblivion Ring effect here. So Jonathan is all D spheres all the time, but he is tapped out again so Troy can resolve whatever he feels like resolving. Four mana looks like as oh here's the dragon inbound. Or is it Xenogod? It is Xenogod, so that sticks and serves back. That uh, actually turns out to be a pretty formidable threat for Troy, as all of his creatures become enormous and can attack the turn they come into play. So two lands and a dissolve off the top for Jonathan after he plays a Jace Architect of Thought and takes it down. We'll scry with the temple here. Correctly uh, playing the Jace, then scrying afterwards. Get a little bit deeper in your deck. So Troy draws. Jonathan has played tap out control this entire game every turn. Not leaving counter magic up. He might not even have that much counter magic left in his deck. So here is an Ash Zealot. We have not played a six land, so we could have a 
Nykthos here to go big. Two more mana for Destructive Revelry, getting back our Chandra Pyromaster. Dealing two damage to Jonathan as a result. That Ash Cell's going to be a 4-4. Four, four with the Xenogod trigger. One, two, three, four, five, six. He needs one more devotion to turn on that Xenogod. But looks like here we can tick up Chandra, put Jonathan down to 16, attack with the Ash Cell, and kill the Jace. Seems like a pretty good spot to be in if you are Troy. But uh, Troy choosing instead to redirect one damage from Chandra to the Jace. Keeps it off of drawing cards and just attacks Jonathan's life total. Jonathan plays a Hallowed Fountain tapped and then passes back here. So we know he has a Dissolve in his hand that we saw from the previous Jace split. Also seen a Zorius Charm in his hand, so Jonathan's still in a pretty good spot here. So Troy's still thinking about his options here. Not uh, not nearly as easy to play the turn when your control opponent has five mana up the first turn. Jonathan hasn't tapped out so far. I do not know what that card is. Any miss? Yeah, Miss Cutter Hydra for four here. Can't be countered. Troy choosing what he wants to do here. Ash, looks like he's trying to load up the Ash Zealot with the Xenoghost trigger. He is thinking about it. So that Mist Cutter cannot be Azorius Charmed, and it couldn't be countered. Can't be D-Sphere, but it can be Banishing Lighted, if that's a phrase. Xenoghost not active here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yeah, it is active, but Troy choosing not to attack with it, playing around Azorius Charm, I guess. Uh, I did not see the way Troy uh, indicated his attacks here, but I think the Miscutter is going at Jace, and the Ash Zealot is coming at Jonathan. He wants to get that Jace off the board. Uh, doesn't really care if the Ash Zealot gets Azorius Charmed. So Jonathan choosing his course of action. He is going to burn the Azorius Charm on the Ash Zealot. Now it looks like the uh, Miss Cutter just coming in at, at Jonathan. Troy's playing these games very aggressively, trying to get in damage whenever he can. Probably right to do so, honestly. You're probably not going to win this game if you continue to uh, 
continue to try to one for one your opponent. Well, he's uh, the longer the game goes, the more likely he has to draw five cards at a time. There's another land. There's an Elspeth. Make three tokens. Pass the turn back. So we know that Xenagos is going to be active here, because we know that card that Troy is drawing is the Ash Zealot. So there's a zero. It's a Frostburn Weird on top. You don't draw it, you exile it, and you can play it this turn if you want to. So we can play the Frostburn Weird. We can play the Ash Zealot from our hand. Destructive Revelry on the D-Sphere that's hiding the Hammer of Perforos. That puts Jonathan down to 8. So just using the power of technology to make sure the life total was correct there as Jonathan hit the change the background color button instead of the lose life button. So now Troy deciding what does he want to do. Now we should be attacking with everyone here, uh, including the Xenagos, because there's really no reason not to, I think. So we're targeting the Frostburn Weird. In response, we're going to pump it, so it gets plus four, plus four. I'm sorry, plus two, plus two. So we serve in here with a lot of dudes. Jonathan's just going to chump block no matter what. So I'm not sure if Troy knows that that Xenagos is active or if I'm missing something. He's not blocking with it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I mean, it's super active, right? Maybe he's just so used to it not being active, I don't know. So there is the split from Jace, Doomblade, Supreme Verdict, or Sphinx's Revelation. Here's four mana for a Supreme Verdict. That's going to clear the board of non-indestructible creatures. We're going to make three soldiers after the fact. But Troy still has a presence here. He's still got a Chandra, which can pick off a soldier at any point. He's got a Hammer, which will make Golems. And he's got Xenogod, which can make any threat he plays. Hasty and sizable. So we're ticking up the Chandra, picking off a token, dropping Jonathan down to seven. There is an Ash Zealot. We're trying to win with a Fnatic here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Fnatic would be lethal if we didn't have a spell to counter with it. We're going to activate our hammer, sack a mountain, make a golem. Now we're going to attack with the Xenagos. Likely targeting the Ash Zealot and then just sending in here. Yep, that's what we're doing. Serve in, force Jonathan to have a removal spell. See, Jonathan holding looks like Sphinx's Rev 2 dissolves in his hand. I can't remember if he took that Doomblade off an earlier J split or not. Joy taking his time here, but up against the clock here, he's playing for the tie at this point. Jonathan playing for the win. 
there's a doom blade as uh, as expected chumping out the golem token and because the uh, ash zealot is dead the xenogod is uh, no longer active so it doesn't do any damage it's still tapped not that that's going to matter but uh, in Interesting play there. Jonathan deciding what he wants to do here. At first he tried to attack into the Chandra. That's eventually what he decides to do. Takes up Elspeth and just passes back. So much like in game one, Troy got close here, but I, don't, I just don't feel like... Uh, He's going to have enough to get through here as Jonathan's holding counter magic as well as the Sphinx's Rev in his hand. And these uh, Elspeth tokens are doing an excellent job of blanking the hammer. So we tick up Chandra, put Jonathan down to six. With that Rev in his hand, his life total is effectively ten here. Picks off a token. So Fnatic attempted but met with a dissolve by Jonathan, couldn't afford to let that resolve as it is, if not lethal, lethal close, one, two, three, four, five, six, it would have been exactly lethal. I guess there's an argument for trying to play for a game in which Jonathan taps low enough that that's not relevant anymore, or uh, that, that the counter magic isn't available, but I don't think Jonathan would ever do that. So just pull the trigger, hope he doesn't have it, and when he does, at least you've forced him to get rid of one. Soldiers come in, attacking Chandra, knocking down a three, tick up Jace, tick up Elspeth, make three fresh tokens, sit back on the dissolve in your hand, as well as the Sphinx's Rev, we're going to scry off a Temple of Silence here, leaving on top, so that's got to be... Pretty disparaging for Troy, or disheartening, I should say. He draws off the top here. Taking up the Chandra again, just slowly trying to get there with the Chandra, it looks like. He only needs one more uh, mana symbol to turn on Xenogod, but it doesn't look like he has it. Golem serves in. There's a Perforos. So he's assembled quite the team here of super friends and gods. Perforos post combat again, likely because uh, Troy are trying to bait Jonathan into doing something mid combat and tapping low. But Jonathan. Uh, Not playing into that, the Dissolve answers the Perforos. And remember, he's still sitting on a Sphinx's Rev here. That Elspeth is on 8, getting very close to an endgame here. Mutabolt joins the team here. Chandra finally bites the dust. Jace takes down at this point. Let's draw some cards. D-Sphere or lands. D-Sphere goes to hand, and that's pretty much it. As if the game wasn't... Well in hand prior to that, that D-Sphere pretty much locks it up. Probably not going to fire that off this turn. Probably going to sit... Well, no, I stand corrected. There's a D-Sphere on the Xenogod. Take up Elspeth again. Troy's going to untap in the meantime. See what's on the top of his deck, but... Barring something particularly spicy like a Storm Breath or another Xenogod... Can't imagine a sequence in which Troy can get out of this. Three mana, activate hammer, let's make another golem. Two 
two mana. Destructive Revelry on the D sphere that the Zinnegod is under. Oh no, that's uh, Unravel the Aether, so effective naturalize there. Put a trigger on a Golem. And you should attack with both here because uh, forces Jonathan to chump once at a minimum. And then he only takes 15 on the way back when we ultimate Elspeth. If Jonathan has a removal spell, then this doesn't work out for him. But uh... Oh, I forgot about the Mutavolt. Mutavolt does make it lethal. It's exactly lethal. So there's 12 from the soldiers. Extra... Four from the Mutavolt, and that's going to be good enough. Troy basically tapped out. No cards in hand. No shenanigans. So this one's over just as the round time expires. So we're going to go out here, expedite things. We'll be back with the top eight shortly, so stay tuned. Don't go anywhere, and we'll be right back with more magic action in the top eight.